Oops. I think I said the wrong word. We might have to change our strategy and keep our mouth shut about other countries. Not all, just some. All right. Is anybody out there? I know you all thought I'm gone. They blasted off. They probably mislanded. And this land of fantasy got knocked away. No. I'm back. Hmm. Anyway. I'm going to check real quick. Do a redo. And look at that. Oh, yeah. By the way, who is that character in that last one up there front wise? Who that young boy? I think they put somebody on there. Huh. Okay. Well, you know what? We're going to find out. I'm going to have a few problems. Don't know why. I said the C word. We ain't saying the C word no more. That's, that's it. Okay. Along again. One more time. We're going to just talk about a little section of time. You can't see it unless you got a mirror. That's in code. <laughs> yeah. That's Rubbles, by the way. Rubbles. Rubbles. The story of Rubbles to Riches, by the way. Did you know that? That's that's the, the thing on my card. If you ever saw some of my old cards, it's, uh, yeah. Rubbles to Riches. So, I got this. This uh, worm, he's an avatar, an earthworm. Good thing for an avatar for Earth. He's representing the future of Earth and what was going to happen when the nematodes got killed off by all of the poisons and stuff that started to be used way back 40 years ago that are now very successfully having done that, almost destroying cultivation in the land in many ways. But it gets better. So he's here as an avatar. He's not a real earthworm, so he's, he's safe. It wasn't Avatar. That's let's just say I was not really who I is. That'd be Darby Letic, the imaginary character who's pretending to be on the screen in front of you, right there with you, talking to you. Look, I see him over there. Oh, he's on that other screen right in front of me. That guy. So anyway, what's this about? Well, Darby's talking about imagination, ingenuity, communication. It comes from what? Unity. That's how you get community. Communication from uh, unity in community develops. It's essential, just like truth, because you can't have a good community without truth. Why? A bunch of liars are going to destroy your community. They're coming and say, you did this, you did that, you did this, and you didn't do that, and nobody else did it, but they just want to cause a rift, because if they get you out of there, then they're going to take your spot and move up the ladder in the community to become one of those successful, great politicians and control everything. Okay, these are designed not to become big communities, 50, 60 people. You're way big. That's not counting kids. Most important part about these communities, most important part about these communities is... If possible, homeschooling and teaching. So, here's what it's about. Thus, if I get the first part put together and give millions of dollars away to make little pure salvage outposts where they build houses that become part of the community in the process, teaching people how to build houses who can then go out and build houses for other people out of the houses they can take down locally, just like we've proven can be done. And you'll see me riding the tops of barns on TV and you'll see me taking down houses and stashing them in these big old warehouses that I now need to empty because I just don't really want to be a businessman for Brad anymore. Brad went away and I'm just the designer. I'm just the artist. I'm the ghostwriter. I'm the guy who's supposed to go ahead and give it all away now to the right people. Is that you? So, not just one person. Watch these videos, as many as I can get out, because they keep kind of making them shorter than I wanted them to be. Sydney, hey, nice to see you. Tina, oh good, the faithful are coming back to watch. Now, I gotta hurry, because they keep knocking me down like I'm a bowling pin. Luckily, I set myself back up again. Okay, no censored world. Let's us pursue great solutions here for you. Why? It empowers you. So, we have a free speech zone. Meaning, I'm allowed to offend you, and if you don't like it, leave. And if you like it, stick around. 
you might be part of getting millions of dollars with the stuff spread out and turned into many millions more. So, as I was saying, how does it grow? Here's how it grows. A network of community centers. Not like Habitat for Humanity, where we got a president who always goes out and pounds nails. I really like Carter, and he was really great, except you put Rosinski and other very terrible people in power and put Chile in a bunch of problems. And actually, while we're looking like a good guy in front of that sign, he's actually advertising Lowe's and Home Depot. And that's because they give all this stuff over there. And I have actually talked to an assistant manager who was told personally not to go ahead and get outside the chain of command and talk about building with salvage materials or she would lose her job in Hawaii where she was homeless living in a van with her daughter, having stayed in a homeless shelter and actually been raped, unfortunately. And working in this place, they sent out a supervisor from way over the United States all the way to Hawaii because she had the audacity after talking to me and getting all excited about it and possibly making some tiny houses in Hawaii for the very expensive living costs. And she talked to another manager of another store and he talked to the home base and they sent out that guy to tell her, you do that again, you're gone. Wow. So my many years of speaking about it was actually proven in one particular instance. And since this is an imaginary creature talking about imaginary land and imaginary story that has no attachment whatsoever to reality, thus you cannot sue for anything I would possibly say about a company or corporation that is a public entity that you might make fun of or parody or um, other things, right? Uh -huh. But on the other hand, what is a pure salvage outpost? The point I began with is that we have to have some sort of counter to corporate methods of writing off vendors product by giving it donating it and then getting to write it off instead of paying the vendors for it when they discontinue the product line not that anybody would do that in the real world right but if they did they wouldn't want you to go ahead and build with salvage because then you wouldn't go to their stores and buy their big box products like all that shit rock that they use it's 47 percent fly ash a hazardous waste mixed with 53 percent gypsum sandwiched between paper with black mold spores that are dangerous to your health if they ever turn back into black mold by giving them water having said that in my imaginary world where that happens at you might do some research and find out it may happen in reality too sue the guy it proves in reality it happens oh no you don't have to he done did that it wasn't me so go get him but in the meantime, if you see black mold coming out of your sheetrock because it got wet, that's the bad one. That's the one that makes you sick. That's the one that when you get that black mold in your system and then you get the ECV, that means that you have now a multi-compromised immune system that will give you what's called long haul CV. And because of that, don't get black mold in your house on top of going out there and catching the darn CV again. Okay, right behind this. To create a network of community centers with community tools. Because you know what? Going out there and buying all those tools like a table saw and sticking it in your living room and working out in the parking lot of an apartment complex is extremely difficult. Not to mention, I would dare say, impossible. Now, nothing's impossible, but let's just say, typically you put all your shit out there in the driveway and you go up there and put your tools inside and you go start working on it at nighttime. If you don't have anything tied down, typically it's going to disappear by morning. I've had it done by full semi loads disappear overnight behind double barbed wire with symphony wire on top of it. And they hot wired the forklift to load the stuff onto the guy's truck and put it back again. <sighs> okay. The idea is in community centers with community tools and the community support of the elders <clears throat> and or the local, if you got a farm or a homestead, this is like community. I mean, by the community, it's not necessarily a government, not, not necessarily a government entity as a community the government might choose to help you they might actually say hey let's clean up the town and help let's provide a warehouse let's provide oh all these old buildings to tear down salvage and use the materials on let's let the people that are getting involved take down the condemned houses and use the materials to build villages and small housing for all the people that is not big corporate bank fed subdivisions with imported material due to international code being written by grand big corporations and then just rubber stamped by paid off politicians in this 
strange book I'm writing of wibbly and wub. Now, in the real world, no such thing exists. They're all honest politicians, and every vote counts. In the real world. But in the fantasy world, there's some glitches. We'll talk about those as we go. Because the idea is to create these communities where if you're in a community like that and you vote on something, guess what? You're obligated to count your vote. As if you had like a world union of beings and we, all the beings, you, I, we, I, all of us, I had a vote. And you know what nowadays what's interesting is if you got a cell phone, you got to vote. The entire world, a world union of beings could actually vote on whether or not the uh, leaders uh, who claim to be leaders could take us to war. Your side votes, your population says, no, nah, we don't go. And we vote, we say, no, nah, we don't want to go. I think we can communicate, communicate, not shoot each other. And through communication, this sincere, real, truthful, not the kind that, wait a minute, I got all these toys, these bombs. What am I going to do with these? How you, if you don't buy my bombs, I'm going to have a recession. I can't build more bombs. I can't build more jets. I can't build more planes. You know, that's the wrong economy, by the way. Sometimes it's good to collapse in a certain portion of the economy, such as the war-based economy. So, this is how, how you do this. If you can't solve the planet and all the problems, then you just do little tiny pockets of it. So, we're going to do tiny local pockets of, we solved the problem. Here's the sanctuary. We took care of the birds. Here's a people area. We take care of peoples. <laughs> you get it? Each of the pure salvage outposts is designed to morph into whatever you all want it to be. I'm not coming over there to run your darn pure salvage outpost. I'm simply giving you what it will take to create your community. Whatever it is, as long as it doesn't want to shoot me, can I walk over there because I don't believe the way you believe. That's a religious, fundamentalist doctrine that I don't agree with. Violence, killing others, I don't agree with that. This is a peaceful virus. This is a world peace virus. Be in, in, hmm, paid for without money. How's that? I'm going to give it all away, guys, because if I gave you $100,000 in gifted materials, you would have to pay $30,000 in tax for the gift to the, internet, to the IRS. But if I give you trash, there's no tax. I repeat myself, but I say again, loopholeology. I'm a professor of loopholeology. And, and one of the primary loopholes is how do you legally circumvent paying taxes to a system you don't morally agree with? It's, it's possible. And that's what I try to teach people. There's a peaceful path to that. Some of it's simplifying your life. Some of it's dumping some of the load, including your historical load of bullshit that you've been fed. The um, things that are supposed to be facts that aren't facts. The um, suppositions that are lousy. For example, women can't build houses. My ass, women can't build houses. I'd far rather teach a woman how to build a house than a guy who's been building junk houses for 30 years is going to argue with me every time I tell him, no, we're going to do it and make it look good. And they go, well, that's stupid. I can do it cheaper and faster. I go, well, then you just go do it cheaper and faster and prove it. And they did. Whew, God, did they do it. you seen those 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 boxes that look like boxes? They look like mobile homes shrunk down with the little Mr. Tiny machine. And then put them on wheels so idiots can pull them down the highway with underweight trucks. And, oh yeah, old tires are ready to blow out. And, 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 and. If you haven't heard my rant on tiny houses on wheels being dangerous to the health of those who get them brand new and inhale all those wonderful chemicals for the first five years... You really ought to listen to that before you go do and just lock yourself in a house and heat it up and breathe in the house. Here's what I, what I would, if you were to breathe in all the chemicals that are in a house, a tiny house on wheels, you know, like this analogy, this is a good one. If you keep breathing in the plasticizers and the endocrine disruptive compounds that mimic estrogen and the formaldehyde and uh, lint and uh, little, all the things that will come up because you don't have an air exchanger and so you block it out and you have just the same air, you're rebreathing it all night long. If you were to do this, you know what? You'll look kind of like one of those boxes eventually, or at least look at it this way. This assumes you're going to go ahead and use a coffin because then you'll have just the same thing. You'll look like that for a long time. You'll have that same view because you're going to die. It's going to kill you and your baby and your husband. I'm serious. 
You got to get fresh air. You can't lock yourself in those little spaces. There's not enough air to start with. There's too many chemicals. In the first five years, it will give you headaches. It'll give you vertigo. And if I hadn't talked to over and over and over again, the victims, and seen and talked to them and had them move out and get better and have the baby who coughed and cried for five months stop coughing and crying and settle down. I've watched it. You have problems? You have respiratory problems? You want to figure out how to fix it? Let's talk. Most of your problems are not going to be fixed by taking drugs to hide the symptoms. This is about creating communities that know about herbal, that know about other ways of staying healthy, exercise, getting grounded, putting your hands and your feet in the earth, growing your food, eating it fresh, not putting a bunch of poisons on it, not using artificial sweeteners, eating less, in some cases eating a lot less. It's bad for you. It destroys your body trying to digest all the toxins and all the food you're eating all the time. You're wasting all that energy digesting food you don't need to eat. Eat less, weigh less, and you can do more. If you don't believe me, I'm clocking in at maybe 160 range, and if I put 50 pounds on my shoulder and take myself up to the 205 I was at when my son was six foot four and I needed to be big to feel big, 50 pounds, that's a 25 pound sack of rice on each shoulder all day long. No. No. Do it. You're going to be saying no by the end of the day. I guarantee you'll be so damn tired. And yet your 50 pounds overweight is like carrying two 25 pound bags of rice on your shoulders. And they go, wow, my knees are wearing out. My hips are wearing out. My ankles are wearing out. I'm feeling sick. It's like, no, I can't understand why. Please prepare by getting your body ready. Don't sit home and turn into a marshmallow cabinet. Again, I'm sorry. I get distracted. Look at that. Okay. If we create a network of community centers that can act like schools or places where elders, mentors, can get together with plans strategies that elders may have that young kids don't have under 30 like how to get out of a paper bag um a path to freedom freedom of debt freedom of having to worry about a house all your life getting a house you can take with you if you want to move put it on a trailer pick it up move it down the road unfold the porch with barn hedges on it to hold it and put it back together again live in it you know what you pass away your children can't live in the old folk community. They don't want those kids over there. So you fold it up again. You pick it up and you haul it over to the young people community. And you gift that piece of trash piled up that has no tax ramifications. If you don't sell it, it's never worth anything. This is the beauty of this game. This is a legal game. You get to normally if you were to buy it. So somebody builds it in your town, you buy it. They get to go ahead and get the income. Say it's um, 10,000 materials a house would sell for by the time you put labor in it, profit in it, everything. It's about $40,000. That's a cheap, homemade, tiny house. Using salvage materials. Old methods to get it to cool using airflow, not air conditioners all the time. And to heat it using good insulation and allowing air to flow in your windows. So if you did want to put something inside, you have air left to breathe. It's a matter of using old materials that were harvested 100 years, 150 years, 200 years ago. They're all over the country for free, already standing there waiting for you instead of paying $8 for a stud. Duh. Okay, now, if you go ahead, and one meal a day is good, Vicky, by the way. If you get down to one meal and you eat it in the middle of the day, there's this thing called ketosis where your body will start then consuming all the crappy cells and itself, then digesting them, turning them into good cells, using them instead of sending them out the back end as waste. It makes a good body, a younger looking body, a healthy looking body. Yes, it's a good idea. Otherwise, if you get old and you don't have all those ingredients, being old isn't so great. If you're in bed, in pain, in a coma, sitting like, yeah, yeah. And I've seen it. And I've seen people hang on so scared to death that they'll remain frozen in a bed like this for 10 years on their back with sores. Scared of death, not scared to death. Scared from death. It isn't that bad. It's going through a veil. You're not... Let's put it this way. Some people have pretty bad lives. Payback might be there. You know, I can't, can't say doing bad shit doesn't get you bad things. But I can say 
going through the door itself is not painful. Maybe what you get there afterwards might be a little tough. And some people are scared. They're scared to death. They're going to have to face all the lies, all the pretending, possibly killing people or being responsible for killing people. So I didn't kill anybody. No, I just made the the switch that you push for the bombs. I didn't kill nobody. I made a lifetime out of making the best switches and designing some of the coolest crap for killing people. But I never killed nobody. Yeah, that, that works for a lot of things, by the way. So if you're part of it, does that mean you're um, not part of it? If you're part of it? Oh, I'm part of it for money. Oh. That's the same thing. Just what, the, what was the price? Of your honor. So what I'm trying to offer is people a chance to go out there and do this life like they're doing already, a lot of cases, and show me what you're doing, you've been doing it, and I'm going to give you possibly more to do it with better. And so you can show others and they can then see it can be done. Because what I've found is unless people see it can be done, they don't believe you can do it. When I was in school, nobody ever run the four minute mile. And then lo and behold, while I'm in high school, somebody did. When I'm in high school, Fosby comes along and we're all banging into that high jump pole and he comes along and goes backwards over it and we go, holy crap, how do you do that? Of course, I had a broken back and my back doesn't bend that direction. It's actually real good at not bending that way in the middle. Uh, but that's another thing. anyway. But the point is this. Everything seems impossible until somebody does it and then when a guy comes along and builds trash houses out of 95% pure salvage like Brad did and sells them for as much as $160,000 for a single two-story-ish house, 30 foot long. And I say two-story-ish because you don't want the second floor to really count for tax purposes. That's one of the loopholes. In Texas, if the sidewall is lower than 4.6, if the ceiling is generally lower than 5.8, I like 6'2 in the middle for my hat. But if it's generally lower, it's just storage space. So I store bedrooms upstairs. Convenient. And downstairs, it might only be a 326 square foot house, which is just a portable building, which is not taxable as a house. It's only taxable as a portable building, which is much cheaper. And it depreciates in 10 years instead of 29 years for IRS purposes. And then once it's depreciated, it's just a depreciated pile of trash like a portable building is. And you don't normally go and sell that and make money back and have a value that gets praised. You just give that to somebody for free, like a child, and no tax ramifications. Because if you gave that child that $50,000 house, they'd have to pay the government fifteen dollars or $20,000 as income that year. $50,000 income that you gave them if it was valued based on a sale. But there'll be no sale because you'll get free lumber. And you'll use the pure salvage outpost and free labor of others that all go together. And until it sells, it is worth nothing and thus cannot be taxed as worth anything but a portable building. And that portable building is maybe habitable. But for example, in Texas, let's just say you don't have running water. You have walking water. You walk your water in that you use and the main bathhouse, kitchen stuff has all the other kind of water. Then you don't have to have a septic. And you can use a composting toilet, like a five-gallon bucket with dirt. It's legal until you put running water in. Then you can't do that. So don't put running water in your house. Duh. So it depends on where you're at. There's all sorts of loopholes. You want to know what a loophole is, study what the local code is. Or get away from the local hole. That's the loophole. Stay out of a region that has code. Find everything you can possibly do. And if a piece of art that looks like a house happens to not have code to it, and if that piece of art that looks like a house happens to get stayed in on a regular basis, but isn't really truly full-time living quarters, just occasional. Six, seven, eight hours a day, maybe, at night. And maybe some other times. But not full-time. No. No, never, never. For tax purposes. For code purposes. It's a portable building. We get the idea. So I want to go ahead and spread this idea, this wonderful idea through a world union of beings that go out there and we come up with these little communities as examples. And you're going to have to morph this in different ways. If you live up north, you're going to build one way. If you live out east, you're going to build another way. If you find out there's different loopholes and you got to do it a little different, I'm going to work with you to find out what that loophole is. And I've even got some promise that there may be a, a young lady coming who's got some legal skills. 
so we can write those legal looking documents to go ahead and make this work in different places. Because you know what? They don't like my. <laughs> Why don't they like my legal documents? I don't understand it. I do beautiful legal documents. Well, in, in, in the world of Wibbly and Wub, which is where you came when you got on this channel, and if you're a troll who haven't wandered over here and didn't know this is where you were at, go bother somebody who cares, okay? This is like this is a channel where nobody gives a crap about trolls. Well, actually, they, they fit in between the back teeth pretty well. I like them in that sense. Okay, another one. Look at that. If you have code or you went to the site already, you'd be able to see that and know what that said. And what did that say? I better read it, huh? It says... Kind of shows a road on the top. It's a truck. And the truck is going from anywhere, anywhere in the world. What makes this different than any other contest you've ever seen? You don't have to pay any money to get in. That means there's no rules, there's no laws, there's no sweeps. You don't have to buy anything. You have to be able to just go ahead and figure out how to go ahead and there. Give me some line, a bull, and have to face me if it's a Line a bull. Or come up with a really good plan. A group of you. Listen to what I'm doing. If you can't watch these videos because they disturb you too much, well, you're probably not the right people. If I talk about crazy, crazy crap, and you just can't handle it because you think I'm serious all the time about everything I say because there's no censors in the world and there's no chance that I'd ever get knocked off and not be able to finish this out and give this all to you because they don't seem like good things. But if they don't think it's real, they probably won't. But some of you that know me, and you know Brad, Brad wouldn't give me all these millions of dollars worth of stuff to give away if he didn't think I was a good guy. And Darby's been on here now for several years telling you what Brad did, why he did it, why he left. Why he's not going to come back? Why he's not going to do business? Instead, he wants you to do it. And without him there to tell you what to do, but to guide you, maybe mentor you a little bit from a distance, and I'm going to help. Because we got these amazing phones. Look at this. This phone, as long as it's working and I'm not banned, ghosted, or knocked out of there, is vaporized, and all the other crap that they seem to do. Cut off. Anyway, so, oh, I better read this real quick before they cut me off again. All right, now, if you come from anywhere and submit, with a good plan. You can be down in the Philippines. You can be out in some place. And this is not a terrorist camp. This is, again, remember, um, watch my other videos. If you guys aren't paying attention, please, scratch your head. Make sure it's working like this. See, I did it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. You got it? Okay. What will you manifest with your energy of soul, your wub? Wub, keyword. Capital letters, world union beings. Capital W, baby U, baby B, that's the web, lowercase. It's on the words over there. But it's basically, you know, the energy of soul, God thought, of prana, of chi. There's lots of names for whatever you want to call energy of spirit or soul. But it's, uh, it's what fires up your filament. And when you get passionate, as Gandhi said, as Buddha said, you can light a thousand candles with your candle and not shorten the life of your candle by a moment. In fact... A well-lit-up room makes for great music and harmony. That's what we want. A well-lit-up world where everybody's vote around the world counts because you got this air cell phone. And if not, you got somebody right there in that town that can verify when you walk up to that community cell phone that this is so-and-so and he's voting and he's good. And anybody that messes with those votes, well, you know what, I'm sorry, but that's death sentence stuff. You don't take away the world's votes and the right to stop war. You don't send other people out to die unless you're willing to die for a dumb decision and lie. And if you're willing to die for a lie, well, make that lie, but you got to have a court. And that's what they have, like Nuremberg trials and all that kind of stuff. That's what you have when you have a court of the people that got wronged. And this time it's the entire world getting wronged. So if a world peace virus got around the world in a heartbeat before everybody figured out it might be serious and everybody thought it was just some really cranky, strange, weird person who might be giving away a few million dollars worth of goodies to go ahead and perpetuate a concept, an ideology. What makes an ideology different from an idea? Do you know the difference? Most people don't. 
I'm giving you a second. Ideology versus an idea. What is the definitive difference between the two? Tick tock. Tick tock. An ideology can support itself, finance itself, pay for itself. So how do you do that? More millionaires are made out of salvage than any other business in the United States. Any other industry. Because people give you stuff and you take it apart and you use the parts to do, make stuff that people want to buy from you. Dog houses, chicken coops, playhouses, people houses, barns, goat houses. Hmm, pure salvage outposts out of metal. I got 87,000 square feet of metal coming off the roof of the warehouse in Gonzales that has 3,000 doors in it and 2,000 windows and then another 1,000 windows in there all in jam still. Um, 10,000 square foot of flooring at least. And that's before we take the building down. It has another 80,000 square foot of 2 by 6 flooring on top of 2 by 8 joists on top of 4 by 6 beams, 20 foot long, 120 years old. That is as old as the American Medical Association. Can you imagine that? Yeah. They cut those trees down the time that Rockefellers were creating the American Medical Association. And the uh, Freud-based psychology institute. So you get crazy people tagged and you got ways of pharmacologically affecting everybody and convincing them it's a good thing to do. All put together in a short period of time in the early 19th century by some very rich people who thankfully were able to create a system whereby everybody goes to people with white coats for healing instead of going to the people that were around for 4,900 years before that. Doing a much better job of it, by the way. In hospitals in America, 250 to 300,000 people a year would die of infections um, obtained, gifted, granted to them after they entered the hotel. The hotel. hotel hospital. The hospitality may kill you. If I had a hospitality hotel where 300,000 people died every year and you could nail one person to the cross for it, what would you do? But luckily, it's not one person. It's an entire organization called the American Medical Association in the fictitious world of Wibbley and Wub, where they get blamed for all that stuff because somehow or another, that simply has gone down dramatically since CV came along and killed off the cold and the flu and dramatically reduced the amount of deaths in hospitals due to infections while simultaneously reducing the number of people in hospitals with anything other than COVID. Isn't that amazing how that works? But have no fear. Have no fear. Underdog is here. He's up there, I mean, over in D.C. And he's going to cure everybody instantly with take off your mask. Oh, no, put two masks on, but it's all good. So go back to work and something else. I'm, I'm still reading that part of the chapter up there where we figure out what's going to happen after that. But for the moment. Here's the point. What will you manifest with your energy of soul? Your life force is a human energy. What is your intention? Your creation of what? Functional, sustainable futures. In an, an artistic way. And you know what? Art houses, that's a great way to do it. Art houses, that's houses you create that you can live in. What a novel idea. Not just a billboard. But a house, a piece of furniture that's usable, functional, not just a ball that hangs in the sky and does nothing. It's pretty, but it doesn't do anything. But if you made that ball and had a charge to it, so it picked up the atmospheric pressure, ran down a wire, and created perpetual power. Now, that's another thing entirely. We should talk about that. A ball blowing in the wind and what it can do on static lines that then suddenly are not static and run little tiny generators and create power just by swinging. Anyway. So we want functional artists, artistic stuff. We're going to be doing some things here. Water features that will actually create power. Water going downhill, eight pounds to the gallon, going down a drop, creates eight work pounds per foot of drop. So if you have 400 gallons, that's 300, you know, four, eight times that. Yeah, 300, 3,200, oh, 3,200 pounds per foot that it drops. You can do some work with that or crush somebody at the bottom of a 50-foot drop, one or the other. So... I want you to go ahead and make a plan. 
then tell us in as many ways as you can what the plan is. You may have one already going, and that's even better because it's showing you've already done stuff. You already have progress. You're even more likely to get more. This isn't just for newbies just starting out that have never swung a hammer and don't know anything about a nail, except getting nailed. And that's not counting. And you're not going to get this by getting nailed. I don't do that. That's not that kind of game. Don't say, oh, you're so cute. Just give me a house. I think you're wonderful. Flattery is like old, old age stuff, shit. And I'm not that old yet. <clears throat> I know. All right. Let us see your dream in as many ways as you can. And how many players in your dream? I hear people, oh, I got nobody else to help me. I've burned every bridge I got in the world. And I'm an asshole. And, uh, and it's like, you're coming to me for what? So I can waste my time listening to your sob story about how you ripped off everybody in your life for being a liar and a cheat. I don't want to hear it. So let's knock out. 40% of the people that would have applied before they listened to that part of that because that's what they were going to do. Now, if you're one of those wonderful people, incredible people, that's worked hard and yeah, you've been ripped off a lot, but you trusted a lot of people, you did good things for a lot of people, maybe things aren't going so good for you, but it's not your fault, but you are working on something. You are making progress. You are showing that even in spite of all the trauma of our youth, and I share that intimately, it made us better. So what are we going to do with that? How are we going to help others? Because that's what it made us want to do. You get beat up when you're a kid. You want to make sure people don't get beat up around you. Unless you're weird. And then you go out and if you're a pedophile, you may have been abused. Well, that's something you need to correct. It's not a justification. Nobody abuses babies in my presence. No. I know there would be a body if I saw it happen. No body will continue to do it in my presence because the child will be saved. The other body, I don't even think I want to learn his name because it's a nobody and most likely a dead nobody. There is no place for some of the stuff that goes on in the world and child trafficking. And it's real. Real. And those who want to deny it, you haven't seen talk to the people I have. You haven't felt it. You don't know what it's like to watch the crimes. Go talk to the TV. The rest of you Got to stop. Mr. T was on top of it. I don't like everything, everything he did, but he did some darn good things about human trafficking. And there were some things going on in the world I'd like to see continue that have simply been dismantled since then. Bad signs. So, please, let's make these little villages where you can homeschool those children and keep them out of schools where you're allowed to go ahead and wander into the wrong bathroom, regardless of which bathroom it is, regardless of what age you are. And regardless who else is in there before you walk in. Let's make tiny communities where you can have a God. Call him by whatever name you want. As long as it's a peaceful God. Because one God makes all the gods. There's only one God at the top. I don't care what name you want to pick. It's not a single person. It is all of them combined. And so consequently, just like you and I. I look white. Put the right filter on here. I'm a different color. Am I an American? I don't know. I was born overseas. I traveled all my life. I have an American citizenship and passport. What's that mean? It means if I want to leave, I've got documentation to go from one country to another. If I want to leave the planet, what's that mean? If I want to take my body, it might mean something. I might need documentation. But if I want to just leave here spiritually, I don't need nothing. It's not about that. It's not about what I take with me. It's about what I leave behind. And that's what I'm looking for. Who do I leave it behind to? So one million becomes 10 million in value when you build it into houses and villages and communities. And three million then becomes potentially $30 million in value because after that you're also able to make more money. And an ideology, when I ask the question, what's the difference between an idea and an ideology? The answer is an ideology pays for itself. 
supports itself, continues to grow itself, and then enables those who follow it and believe in it to then prosper and thrive as a community growing its own food, teaching its children to be smart and inventful and ingenious, imaginative, not drones, not copies, not subservient, masked, bald, beardless slaves. Because that, in the world of Wibblery and Wub, in the book of Wibblery and Wub, the nightmares that Darby had when he was young included nightmares such as those when instead of a beautiful paradise, it became a prison planet, like Alex Jones talks about or something. Hey, guys. Thank you so much. Soon, very soon, things are going to change even more. It's not going back. So quit worrying about the past. Think about the past. Read some of the stuff I'm writing, some of the poetry, some of these cartoons. You might find a little meaning in them. Some of those videos that people got nine minutes of watching into, by the time I scared off the censors, most of the people ran off too. Imagine that. Never even knew I was going to give away a million dollars. Or two million. Or three million. Or four million. If Brad will let me, I'll give him as much as we can away. He doesn't care. He's not going to spend it. He's not going to convert it to cash and pay taxes on trash. By selling it. You just give it away. And then nobody pays taxes. And everybody builds communities. And you leave what's called the quantum story. Instead of reading about it, you become part of it. You take wub and wibblery, the words of wub, 13 little words about how you communicate through touching, wobbling, through communicating through mind to mind, wibbling, through wibbleizing, creating art that you can live in, art that you can grow eggs out of. And if you do all that and you become a wubber, you believe in wub, a world union of beings that all might have a vote, a say so. Yeah, imagine that. Now that we have the technology, imagine technology worked for us. Instead of censoring us out, it gave you a voice and a chance to give your solutions to the world and help make it a better place without profiting like the big corporations want to do. Where if you have a patent and they can't get it, they simply kill you. Wow. Imagine that. Freeing the world. Freeing the world. Not... Controlling the world, imprisoning the world, and using all these incredible systems and technologies to destroy, destroy, yes, I said destroy, our fabric of our society by erasing our history and not allowing the elders and others to talk and share, like I am, if I were real, instead of just a character that can't be found in a place called Salvage Texas that's not on the map. And yet, through magic, I can fill your trailers. Just by your coming here and investing human energy, showing your devotion, commitment, and promise and truth to doing something for your community and leaving and doing it. That's one of the requirements. You say you're going to do it, you're going to go back there, you got to go do it. And you make it good, you eat a couple houses, you take it back, you get more. Proof is in the action, not the words. Thank you so much. It's been a long time. Please. You don't have a lot of time. I'm going to do all this. And I've already got one, one group selected. And I plan on s literally sending this stuff out of here. Literally, boom, gone. First May in six months. Next May in six months. Maybe more. But at least two sessions. And the third one, the first six months of next year, when it starts getting really nasty... Because by 2024, you ain't going to be moving stuff around on the roads. You can barely get it down the roads now. And this is going to be for a week. This is some crazy weather. This is supposed to be the weather report, but it's bad. It's not supposed to be an earthquake report. Why? Because it's, it's also bad. It's getting worse. It's not a volcano report. It's bad. This is a good news. Don't you feel like I gave you all good news? You got a chance. You got hope. If you haven't watched it, understand. Do it in the morning. Say it to yourself. Just like I'm saying it to you. I love you. I care about you. The good ones. I really care about you. The liars, the cheats, the thieves, the succubi. I care about you and that God made you. And you know, I should be able to get to where you're supposed to go. As fast as possible. 
and leave the rest to us. We'll take care of it. There's a millennium of peace and prosperity. I can't do it alone. It's going to take a world union of beings. I'm just a delivery guy. I'm the ambassador of the intercosmic web society. You see this world peace virus that the censors would have had to watch for the last whole dang hour to get to, and they're not going to do that because they're busy, you know, short attention span shit. Yeah. Well, the idea is if we get it around the world in a hurry and we, all the eyes together, join and say, hey, you know what? We just might have something to say about this. And it's all kind of encoded because nobody thinks we're serious and nobody knows we are a wubber. What the heck's that mean? That means I believe in truth, honor, maybe even God and the powers of what is there if you do. Not just to heal yourself, as in heal thyself, or the light comes from within, or all sorts of things that you might say that other great people have said. The best of them all is love. Light, truth, friendship. You have to have love and truth to even evidence that there's God. And I firmly believe that there is a God and I'm part of that God manifesting just like you are through this little filament and gelatinous shell to demonstrate as Darby, a bioelectrical computer being graphically demonstrated on a screen in front of you, perhaps sent to you 10 years from now in the past, in the future? Or would you believe almost simultaneously around the world? Isn't that amazing? It's almost like we're living in a dream. I am. So mine's in heaven. How's yours doing? Love you guys. See you soon.